we've got a really great talk from Giancarlo Colmenares and Amy Wong from Huawei Canada, and they're going to be talking about their work on sickle code generation. Hello everyone, I'm going to talk to you today about our project, Optimizing SQL Kernels with TDM and AKG. So, SQL is a cross-platform abstraction layer that enables developers to write code for heterogeneous processors using standard ISO C++. Both the host and the device application code can be contained in the same source file. SQL performs as a layer of abstraction that enables the creation of complex algorithms that can run on heterogeneous and parallelized targets, such as GPUs, FPGAs, etc. It uses the simt based programming paradigm to write the kernel, uh, the device kernel, and if it's compiled with the LVM, the code can be optimized according to the selected tracks. However, in order to achieve maximized performance on specific targets, particularly for machine learning kernels, we'll need a more specialized compiler like TVM. Then TVM, on the other hand, um, provides the infrastructure to automatically generate and optimize kernel code for multiple targets with great performance. Currently, there isn't a direct way to import SQL kernels to TVM for optimization. So we're presenting here a novel module that can parse a SQL kernel that has been extracted by an LLVM path, produce a TVM compute, and then trigger TVM's optimization passes in order to generate high performance code. The generated code can be later linked to the original host code in LLVM to produce the corresponding binary. The module has been designed in a way that it can be executed as a standalone tool or called as a TVM function. It will read the kernel definition from a text file and output the corresponding optimized device code. We're using Huawei's TVM implementation called AKG, which is customized to optimize kernels for the DaVinci chip. And we have created two new files, one for the parser and the other to handle the, the intrinsic. Then the file format that we created and we named uh, loopy code is designed as a simplified format to define kernels and that's both human, human readable and easily parsed by a program. We start by defining the tensors with their shapes and types and then the operations that describe the kernel, which might include loops, instructions, and other control flows. We support multiple nested loops and nested if else clauses as well and instructions must be written in a single line and follow the format A equals to expression, where A is an index tensor and expressions can be composed of one or more operands combining basic op uh, arithmetic operations. And then after this, we have the parser. And as we said before, um, the parser can be triggered by executing the tool on the command line or by calling the function and sending the kernel text as an argument. The parser will read the tensor definitions to create the corresponding placeholder object. Then it will read the kernel code line by line to recognize three main types of lines, either loops, if else clauses, and instructions. When a loop or an if, if clause is found, we extract the corresponding information, the conditions or the loop information. But before building the object, we recursively call the parsing function to get the, the body of the instruction. Uh, the recursive call allows us to naturally obtain information of nested uh, instructions or clauses. If not a loop, it will try to parse the given line as an instruction. Tensor indexes can be constants, loop iterators, other index tensors, or even expressions combining any of them. Once we have parsed the, the kernel into a statement object, we call the AKG's build module function with the statement and the list of tensors, the attributes, and the default schedule to get the module. So as an example, this is how we parse um, uh, one loopy code into the, the module. Uh, we have here three uh, tensor definitions, and we have three nested loops, and we have an instruction that performs a matrix multiplication. So when we read this with our parser, we're actually building the, the objects that you see on the right side. We have a tensor, we have a call object, we have multiplication, addition, etc., and the additional um, objects that we need um, to build the module. So uh, once we have this, uh, the other uh, um, additional thing that we have is the intrinsics. And this is since we have we are using AKG, we wanted to take advantage of optimizations that we already know, improve performance by maximizing data locality and throughput on the DaVinci chip. With this in mind, in this project, we support the use of a number of intrinsics, intrinsics for which we apply dimension optimization. So 
users, instead of writing the whole thing, like the three loops, the three nested loops, they can simply write the intrinsic in the text file and the parser will output the corresponding optimized compute for it. Right now we support uh, matrix multiplications with static or dynamic shapes and also convolution. Given the multi-core nature of the DaVinci chip, we also enable the user to indicate how many cores to build the kernel for. Also, the user can indicate auto as the number of cores and AKG will build the kernel to be executed on the optimal number of cores depending on the target hardware. Finally, the, after we have created the TVM compute, the parser will build the corresponding TVM module to obtain the source code for the device kernel. In our case, we are producing CCE code that will be later compiled and executed on the DaVinci chip. When the parser is called as part of the LLVM pipeline, the device code will be then linked to the host code so that it's available in the binary that will be produced. And that's uh, everything that we have today. And right now I open the um, for question and answers. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Giancarlo and Amy, for that wonderful presentation. We do have time for one question. And the question that we're going to ask is, how are you supporting dynamic shape map mole kernel generation for the DaVinci chip? Right. So thank you, Denise, for the great question. So we do have two routes. One is through the intrinsic route, as Giancarlo has said. The other, however, though, either cogeneration or through intrinsic, we do require that the MATMOL shades to be at a 32-byte chunk. Um, the reason is the, the accelerators DMA had this requirement that you can only do 32 bytes at a time. So if we don't do that, there, I mean, if the matrix matrices A or B are as some really odd shapes, then there could be some race condition when multiple cores are trying to to compute on it. So we do require users to pad their shapes to the near 32 byte boundary. Um, this is mostly, um, yeah to prevent the remodify right type of race conditions between the different cores accessing the global memory. Yeah, thank you so much for your comprehensive answer there. Um, we're gonna head to the next, the next lightning talk today and it is a sponsor talk. So thank you Qualcomm for your sponsorship of TVMCon and your continued contributions to the TVM open source ecosystem.